Hey everybody, TGIF, week two is going to end today. So we have a lot of stuff to get through. I'm going to explain writing responses four and five, also talk a little bit about what's due um, next week and how to start preparing for the midterm. Then this first video we're going to talk about research a little bit more, how to choose quotes, what uh, you should be doing when you're quoting another source, how to conduct research a little bit more, and the next video is going to be the difference between summarizing and quoting and how to cite those things in your paper as an in-text citation and also in your works cited MLA list. Okay, so for this video, some of you are already asking about Friday's assignment, uh, the one due today, 4 p.m. This is writing response four, and it's just one or two pages of your rhetorical analysis for peer review. So I'm gonna show you how to access peer review in just a second. Writing response five, which is due on Monday at 4 p.m. This is also due in uh, the peer review. All you're doing with this, as I explain in the actual uh, peer review section, you're just reading your peers' drafts, so you're reading their writing response four, okay, and you only have two peers per group. There are five groups with three people each. So you're reading two of your peers' drafts, and then you're writing a one-page double-spaced response, and I recommend that maybe the first paragraph of this writing response five be one thing that one of your peers is doing well and one thing for a revision. The second paragraph can be the same thing, but for the other peer. One thing the second peer is doing well and one thing for revision. You'll then post these and hopefully you'll go back in and read what your peers wrote about your papers. I will obviously read everything and provide some feedback for your two writing responses. Okay, so before we get to eCampus, um, for next week, your rhetorical analysis paper, the full draft, and again, it's 1,200 to 1,500 words, just like the narrative paper, the full draft is due at 11.59 p.m. on eCampus, and I will open up that portal um, a day or two before. For the midterm, what I expect to see in the midterm is a reflective cover memo. We will discuss what that is on uh, next Thursday. I will also expect to see your narrative paper, but the revised narrative paper. So you should be working on your narrative paper. I have given everyone their feedback by now. You do have two full days to uh, revise. So if you want to save your narrative for those two days, I have built them into the syllabus already. The second, or sorry, the third thing that goes into your midterm portfolio is your rhetorical analysis paper. Now, I'm not going to be able to, to read all of them, comment on them, and return them by Friday. So all you need to do is basically copy the draft that you submit on Wednesday into the Friday draft, okay? So I am reading this draft, and um, I'm not going to reread it for the midterm, but it's I'm having you include it in your midterm to give you a better sampling of what the final portfolio will be like. So again, Reflective cover memo, and I'll explain what that means later, your revised narrative paper where you've made edits, revisions, improved it, and then your rhetorical analysis paper, all in the midterm portfolio, okay? Again, we'll discuss that more next week. Four writing response, four and five. Let's go to eCampus. Here is coursework, and um, Instead of going to exploratory writing, where you submitted writing responses one, two, and three, what you'll do is you'll go to discussions. <clears throat> Under discussions, <clears throat> this is where you posted your introductory, um, introductory remarks. I have created writing response four peer review, writing response five peer review. This one will obviously open first, and I have some instructions here which I'm gonna basically just repeat. So the date, the due date is here, upload, attach and upload one to two pages of your rhetorical analysis paper. So this could be the introduction, it could be um, your paragraph about the foreground or about ethos and pathos, uh, whatever you find is appropriate or whatever you think is the weakest so you can get more feedback on it. That'd be a smart thing to do. So what you'll do is in order to submit it, you click on writing response for peer review. And then I have you all grouped here. Okay. 
For the next paper, the groups will change, but for the purposes of this paper, I've grouped you most like pretty randomly, okay? So let's say um, you just, you find your name, all right, in whatever group you're in, you click on it, and then what you'll do is you will create a thread, okay? So you'll hit reply, and then you will go down here, browse my computer, find whatever um, whatever your file is, open and attach it, just like you would for anything else. You can leave some comments here if you want, you don't need to, and just hit submit. Okay, so that is for writing response four. For writing response five, which is due on Monday, in case you want to get a jump on it and you want to just uh, not think about English for the weekend, that's fine, I understand. So by Monday at 4 p.m., you're going to go into writing response four, read both of your peers' drafts, and then in writing response five, after you type up your response to the peers, you go back into the group. These are all the same groups. So we'll go back into this group, and then you hit reply, and make it clear um, in your writing response who you're talking about. So um, if I were in this group as well, then um, I would say, Eric, uh, this is one thing you're doing well. This is one thing for revision. Jeremiah, one thing you're doing well, one thing for revision. Farrah, one thing you're doing well, one thing for revision. Okay? So just make it clear actually here. You browse your computer and you might title it like Nat's response or Eric's response or Jeremiah's response or Farrah's response. Okay? To make it clear to me and to your peers um, who's responding. Okay. So please let me know if you have questions about that. Um, we will do two peer reviews and you will include some of the peer review suggestions in your final portfolio so it's not just an activity in futility. All right, for um, quotes, let's talk about finding quotes a little bit more and also what you should include when you quote something. So as the last video said, there are four main places that you can go, five plus Google, um, or five with Google. So databases, the first one, Project Muse. And I'm going to go ahead and go to JSTOR. And this is, again, under the databases tab. This one's articles. So under articles, you would just put in your search term from scratch. So I'm still working with the Walking Dead movie poster, let's say, and technology. Google Scholar, your, your search term here, Walking Dead and technology. And then we see what pops up. You can choose to do one of these. You don't have to do all of them. I know that might be overwhelming for some people, um, but... But do try to get a good sampling of sources. So I'm expecting like two or three minimum for the sources. You can have more. And also um, some of you in your free write said that you are the research you plan to conduct is to look up the author or the uh, production company or even the year that something was created. This is not what I mean by research. Those are things that I'm expecting you to do anyway, just so you can understand um, the ethos of the ad or, or sorry of the movie poster or the pathos when was it uh, created what was the audience the target audience again so these things that's a simple Google search okay this what when I say research I mean past a simple Google search so we're at Project Muse you can type in The Walking Dead and technology again and like the last video, we didn't have too many hits because I wasn't a very good researcher uh, with my search terms. But um, here you can again see what journals exist. And these are literary journals that would be talking about a lot of the pop culture elements. Um, and the older that they are, the more hits that you're going to have. So Night of the Living Dead is going to have more information about it than something like the Purge election year. All right. So if we go to JSTOR, you can do the same thing, and you don't need these tabs once you're on the actual site. Technology. 
Okay. So this article came up yesterday. We can go ahead and click it again. And then I said again, download PDF because you can get the full text and you don't have to click through each individual um, page. That gets pretty tedious. All right. This one looks pretty good, peer reviewed. It has The Walking Dead, the, the actual title in italics. Okay, so let's see if we have access to this. View full text. Sometimes the library doesn't pay certain journals, so we don't have access to them, but we do have a ton of them. Let's download the PDF. All right, we have access here. Okay, and there's an abstract, even better, so it saves me some time. So, uh, this is a book, but I it looks pretty promising, so I would click on it, and I have searched already. It is already searched for me. One good trick with um, searching a, an entire book or an entire article is if you want a phrase that's actually supposed to be clumped together like The Walking Dead, then you just put it in quotation marks and it will clump that phrase together for you. So here it's highlighted. If you're under Google book, book search, it's highlighted where this term is used and you can kind of read around the context to see if it's something that you'd be interested in researching further. Uh, because I have not bought this book, it doesn't provide all of the pages, but it does have full chapters that you can look through. Okay, so these again are the main ways that I suggest you research. Let's go ahead and look at this article. So if I want to write um, something about technology in The Walking Dead, because I'm commenting on the city versus nature as... If you remember the poster that I would be rhetorically analyzing, we commented on how the city is presented versus the natural world, so the deterioration, but also this kind of uh, catch-22 of, or this contradiction of the sunshine and then the kind of grimness of the city. So it looks promising, but... Um, nature is like fleeing from it. Okay, so let's go ahead and think about technology in those terms. So I would breeze through this abstract and then hopefully it's something I'm interested in. But let's go ahead and um, look through the article. This is 16 pages. I'm already on page three, so that's good. You don't have to read through tons and tons of articles. But, th so the reason uh, you won't have to do that is because you are good researchers. And by that means you've read the abstract, you've read the title. I recommend then you read the introduction and the conclusion. Because the conclusion paragraph is what actually um, contains the summary of the whole paper. And so you can get a better sense of what the paper has already discussed without actually reading the whole thing. So it's just kind of a way that academics uh, almost cheat with the research. Okay, so if we breeze through this, it's talking about games, Dead Rising. I don't know if any of you have played that. Um, it mentions Romero. That's good to know because we're talking about zombies. And also, Romero is an option for your movie poster. Okay, furthermore, in an age in which malls as self-promoted public spaces have become anything but that as evidenced by not only their design, but also the banning of teens wearing hooded sweatshirts from shopping malls in various countries, including UK Dead Rising, offers players an opportunity to resist the forces that control such social spaces. Okay, so a lot of this is talking about Dead Rising and um, the specifics of that. So what I would do here is I would search for The Walking Dead and see if that has anything to do, or if I wanted to look at the context um, or the conventions of the genre, then I would include Dead Rising or um, Romero zombies in my research. We're going to just cut this video off right here, but we will start the next video with this and um, with quoting and summarizing.